In the days leading up to Palm Sunday, we see what was on Jesus' mind. In Luke 9.51, it says, When the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to Jerusalem. And he sent messengers ahead of him who went and entered a village of the Samaritans to make preparations for him. But the people did not receive him because his face was set towards Jerusalem. When his disciples, James and John, saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to tell fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them, and they went on to another village. This passage shows us what not to think about Palm Sunday. Jesus set his face towards Jerusalem, and that meant something very different to him than it meant to the disciples. The disciples had visions of grandeur that they were going to be uh, there beside the King of Kings as he sat on a political and an earthly throne. They were his friends. Maybe they would even have a chance to rule beside him. We saw even the disciples fighting amongst themselves about who would be the greatest in this new kingdom that was coming. And as Jesus is heading towards Jerusalem, They were excited this was gonna be it. This was gonna be the time he was gonna take over. He was going to take his throne. But before we see Jesus setting his face towards Jerusalem and that that meant something very different for him. It meant setting his face towards the cross. We see that as Mary of Bethany anoints Jesus' feet that Judas is angry, right? That he's wasting this money. But Jesus tells him it's for his burial. He knows it is coming. He wasn't headed toward a physical throne or a political kingdom. Luke 13, 33, it says, nevertheless, I must go on my way today, he says, and tomorrow and the day after following. For it cannot be that a prophet should perish away from Jerusalem. He knows his death is coming and he knows it's going to happen in Jerusalem. Jerusalem meant one thing for Jesus, certain death. And it wouldn't be a quick or an easy death either. Uh, Luke 18, 31. And taking the 12, he said to them, See, we're going to Jerusalem. And everything that is written about the Son of Man by the prophets will be accomplished. For he will deliver them over to the Gentiles, will be mocked and shamefully treated and spit upon. And after flogging him, they will kill him. This was a painful and a humiliating death that he was setting his face towards. We must remember that this was not a pleasant thing to think about for Jesus. He had a human nature just like he had a divine nature. And his natural reaction would be to shrink away from this pain and this humiliation. And his human nature would have loved to live a long and a joyful life, to kick back and relax, to build a life for himself. But he turned his back on all of that and he set his face towards a vicious beating, being spit on and mocked. And then the most painful death imaginable. This was not easy, it was hard. And until we understand this, we cannot understand the depths of his love. Love propelled him to die. John 15, 13 says, greater love has no one than this, that someone lays down his life for his friends. And that's what this triumphal entry was heading towards. This Palm Sunday, even as the crowds around him clapped and cheered and shouted Hosanna, he is setting his face towards the cross. Jesus' death didn't happen just because Judas betrayed him or because he was envied by the religious elite. It didn't happen because Pilate was too scared to stand up to the crowds. Jesus set his face towards this. And salvation that comes through this cross wasn't just the way that it could happen. It was the only way that this salvation for you and I could be accomplished. Jesus knew what he was stepping towards as he stepped out of heaven to join us on this earth and wrap himself in flesh and to feel pain and sorrow and dread. Jesus was not accidentally wrapped up in a web of injustice. The saving benefits of his death for sinners was not an afterthought. God planned it all out in this 
infinite love that he has for sinners just like you and just like me. He appointed a time. Jesus is the very embodiment of his Father's love for sinners. Jesus knew uh, at this time that he had a mission that he had come to fulfill. And he had to head to Jerusalem to die for our sake in our place. And that's why he said in John 10, 18, no one takes it from me, but I lay down my life of my own accord.